This is a diabetic patient since 8 years on oral hypoglycemic agents came to me with complaints of exertional chest pain since the last few months. The coronary angio showed a 50 to 60 percent borderline lesion in the proximal segment of the LAD artery on whom I performed an IVUS to decide on medical treatment versus deploying a drug eluding stent in a diabetic. The virtual histology and the grayscale on the IVUS would give me information on the plaque burden and its component fatty, fibrous, fibrofatty or calcification and decide on the treatment modality in this diabetic patient with intermediate stenosis. IVUS would also tell me the extent of calcification and whether it is in the outer wall, in the media or intima to decide on whether I have to use a high pressure balloon, a cutting balloon, an angiosculp or a rotablator. I crossed the stenosis with a BMW wire and you can see the BMW wire distally placed in the LED artery. This is a check shoot to look at the BMW wire well placed distally in the LED artery. I am now removing the IVUS catheter. This is a Golden Eagle IVUS catheter. That's the tip of the catheter which has a lens by which we can look into the lumen of the coronary vessel both on the grayscale and virtual histology to look at the plaque burden and to know whether it is a fibrous plaque or a fibrofatty or a fatty plaque and also to look at the calcified lesion. Here you can see the IVUS image, the lens of the IVUS catheter at the tip of the guiding catheter and on the IVUS image you can see the lumen of the IVUS catheter. The IVUS catheter is now advanced from the proximal to the mid segment of the LED and then there is a pullback with a bookmark just after the lesion and at the lesion and on the IVUS image you can actually see the plaque burden it's a significant plaque burden showing fibrous tissue moderate fibrofatty tissue some calcified specks and less of the fatty component the center is the lumen of the IVUS catheter and then is the lumen of the coronary artery and here you can see the significant plaque burden all around uh, looks an eccentric plaque with some calcified specks and fibrous tissue and some fibrofatty plaque and there is a less component of the fatty tissue. If you look at the lumen of the coronary, the plaque burden appears to causing close to 70 to 80 percent stenosis in the proximal segment of the LED artery. This is a Zion's prime stent which I deployed at 14 atmospheres. I did a post stent IVUS examination to look at the struts of the stent to be well opposed on the arterial wall and took a pullback. You can see the IVUS image with a pullback on the strut of the stent and you can see that the struts of the stent are not so well opposed on the arterial wall and at the 10 o'clock position you can see some plaque burden still there. Best would be next. I went with the 3 by 15 mm sprinter balloon and post dilated the stent uh, at uh, 20 atmospheres so that the struts of the stent get well opposed on the arterial wall. This is after post balloon dilatation I have taken an IVUS image and this image shows the struts of the stent are well opposed on the arterial wall which is a perfectly well deployed stent. Even on the coronary angiogram screening you can see the uh, angiogram looks perfect in terms of stent deployment. This is a final image 
to show the struts of the stent extremely well opposed on the arterial wall on a pullback. Uh, this image is a post stent uh, deployment and you can see the stents uh, well opposed on the arterial wall and uh, you can also see a chroma uh, with uh, the color flow mapping which shows a, a very widely open lumen of the coronary artery.